So trick problems in three dimensions. So the two dimensional ones are usually nice and easy. You've got a right angle triangle, bang, go and find whatever it is you have to find. In a 3D one, you've got to find the triangle. It's not necessarily obvious where the triangle is. I personally like to redraw it in 2D. I just find it easier to uh, work out. Okay, I'll calculate this. So if I pull out the different 2D triangles that I can find, and some of those triangles will have common sides and things like that. Uh, but I find it easy to solve the problem like that. So, oh yes, so the triangles, as I say, they may not immediately be obvious where the triangles are. So you might actually have to draw triangles that are not originally there. You could draw in some lines and, ah, yes, I'll, I'll create a triangle this way. So how do we find the angle then between a line and a plane? If I've got this cone, uh, the diameter of the cone is 18 centimetres. We know the slant height's 15. We want to find the angle the curved surface, well, curved surface area, makes with the base. If you hang on, how's that going to create a triangle? So we think of it in two dimensions, if you like. So I can chop the cross section of the cone. And if I was to drop, I imagine that the, the slant edge is the line that's meeting the base. So if I was to drop straight down, so I'll drop the perpendicular from a point. It could be any point I like, but it makes sense to drop it from the top because I know the length then of that line. So if I drop it straight down and I've created a right angle triangle that I can work with, join the points of intersection and uh, well, we know the diameter is 18, so the radius is 9. The angle I want to find is the line makes with the base. It's theta I want to find, so now I can solve the trig problem. Uh, cosine of theta would be 9 on 15. Theta ends up being approximately uh, 53 degrees. Well, what happens if you've got two planes? So let's draw up a diagram. In fact, I've drawn a tetrahedron there. Okay. So for the example we're going to use, we're going to find the angle between two adjacent faces. So two adjacent faces would basically be two planes joining each other. So how I do it, okay, from the point of intersection of the two planes, I've got so many planes there, I could pick any two I like, but I'll draw perpendiculars along both of them. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the plane ABC here. So at the top where those two lines meet, I'm drawing the perpendicular. And then I'm saying, hey, what angle does it make with the plane, which is, I'm looking at the base there, so B, C, D. Again, it's like saying, hey, if I was to chop the shape, what's the angle going to be? But those lines that I'm working with, it's important that they're at right angles to the, uh, the edge that the planes meet. That's the important bit. Because then I can create the triangle, there's the angle. Haven't got a right angle triangle at this stage. That's what I've got. So redrawing it now in two dimensions to make life easier for myself. Uh, so we can see the triangle I'm talking about is ADE. We know the length, the red one there, because that's the edge of the tetrahedron. So that's A. The angle I want to find is between the two planes. So it's theta. All I've got is I know the length of A. I can't do trig with just knowing one side. I've got to find the length of some other sides here. In this case, it involved using another triangle. And so the other triangle I used was ABC, because I know some information. If it's a regular tetrahedron, not only are those faces triangles, they're equilateral triangles. So I know that angle is 60 degrees. Uh, that works out to be A root 3 on 2. I didn't actually use trig there. I used the exact ratio triangle because it was a, the classic 30-60 triangle. I know the sides are always going to be in the ratio 1, 2, root 3. So therefore, if AC is A, then AE must be A root 3 on 2. Of course, you could use trig to do it. Okay. Whilst we haven't talked about the cosine rule yet, um, hopefully you remember it. We will look at it again later, so don't panic if you don't remember it. But that will allow me to now solve the problem because both of these sides, AE and ED, are going to be the same. I've got three sides of a triangle. 
I should be able to find the angle using the cosine rule. So the cosine of theta would be 3a squared on 4 plus 3a squared on 4 minus a squared over 2 times. Tidying all that up, I get cosine theta is a third. Cosine theta is a third. So I get 70 degrees 32. Now, in the exercise we're about to do, I think everything is right angled triangles. I don't think you need to use a cosine rule to solve any of the problems. That's not to say you, if you see a use for it, to make it quicker, you can't use it. But you should be able to solve it with right angled triangles. Here's an HSC one, going back to the year 2000. Uh, so a surveyor stands at point A, OT is a tower, uh, and they know the angle of elevation because they've got their little, what do they call them, theodolites or maybe they right at. I know the angle up there is 45 degrees. They then walk 100 metres due east. So because it's due east, now they've told us we were originally south. So if I've gone due east, that must be a right angle then, basically there. And now we have a look at the tower and it's 30 degrees. Okay, so we want to find an expression for OB. So the base of that right hand triangle there. So let's actually draw that right angle triangle. Uh, Okay, they're not looking for an exact value uh, because we don't know what H is, but they've said put it in terms of H. So it should be enough to use basic right angle triangle. OB over H would be tan of 60. OB is H tan 60. You might have gone um, H over OB is tan 30 and said, oh, it's H divided by tan 30. That's okay. It didn't say what the expression had to be just said it had to be in terms of H. Show that H turns out to be 50 root 2. Okay, I'm going to draw the other triangle in now. It was a 45 degree right angle triangle. That makes it uh, isosceles. So AO we know is also H. I'm now going to draw another triangle and this one's the base of the picture. So we just worked out OA is H. In part I, I said OB was H tan 60. And we know AB is 100 because we walked 100 metres along. Uh, Pythagoras. So H squared plus 100 squared is H squared tan 60, or tan squared 60. Rearranging all this, eventually, we'll make H the subject. And there's the exact value. 100 over root 2, it's said to show it was 50 root 2. So what is the bearing of, the ba of B from the base of the tower? So let's draw that up. So the bearing from the tower. So the compass is at the base of the tower. And we want to know the bearing of B. So angle NOB is what we're trying to find. We know OA now is 50 root 2. We know AB is 100. So if I just find, well, that's the angle I have to find. But if I find AOB, subtract it from 180, we'll get our, our answer. So AOB, 5444. Subtract from 180, and there we go, 125, 16.